Welcome back to Harbaugh. It's equal pay day today, the date symbolizing the additional days of work necessary for a woman to complete in the new year before she makes what a man is calculated to have made the year before. According to government statistics, full-time working women today make 77% of what their male counterparts earn. And one of the trailblazers in the battle for equal pay is Lily Ledbetter. Told by the Supreme Court she was too late to file her equal pay case, Congress interceded and passed the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, but only after overcoming a Republican filibuster. I would feel that this long fight was worthwhile if at least at the end of it, I knew that I played a part in getting the law fixed so that it can provide real protection to real people in the real world. President Obama signed the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act into law, the first bill he signed as president of the USA. And that fight continues for equal pay, of course. And joining me right now from Scottsdale, Arizona, is Lilly Ledbetter. Ms. Ledbetter, thank you so much. What do you want to see? I don't know if you're for Hillary Clinton or not, but you might be. What do you think she should do for the cause of equal pay if she gets elected? Right up the bat. She will support it, and also we need uh, paycheck fairness passed. That needs to become a bill passed and become law. That would have helped me. Had that been the law back in my day, I wouldn't be here today. And uh, Hillary was one of the, uh, as a senator, was one of the co-sponsors for the Ledbetter bill. So I think she gets it, and I think she understands that she will be fighting for equal pay for equal work. What is the number one obstacle right now that keeps a, a woman from fighting for her rights? Uh, what, what is the it's obstacle? Mainly, it's mainly the fact that it's been done like this for so many years, and the companies and employers have not adhered to the federal laws and guidelines because, you know, President John F. Kennedy signed Equal Pay in 1963, and here I am in 2015 still talking about equal pay. The companies are just not adhering to the federal guidelines, and it has to be enforced. And also, they use so many uh, problems against women that really shouldn't be a part of the problem, because women hold jobs and do it as much as the men, and also it creates a problem for the American family. Well, here's the uh, recently announced Republican presidential candidate Marco Rubio talking about equal pay during the last presidential election campaign when he was a surrogate for Mitt Romney. Just because they call a piece of legislation an equal pay bill doesn't make it so. In fact, much of this legislation is in many respects nothing but an effort to help trial lawyers collect their fees. And Senator Ted Cruz of Texas didn't vote on last year's Paycheck Fairness Act, but he did have this to say about the bill. This has nothing to do with actually improving the situation of women in the workplace. This has everything to do with a political show vote for the Democrats and paying off the trial lawyers. Ms. Ledbetter, they seem to have their talking points down. They say this is a payoff to the trial lawyers. Your response? They don't believe it exists, no, the whole issue of inequality, I guess. No, sir. It, it, they, it's, a, it's not a myth. This is math. And trial lawyers do not get a lot of money out of cases like mine because most people in the predicament that I found myself in earning only 77 percent of what my male colleagues made, uh, we don't have the money to afford a lawyer that can hang in there with a big case for 10 to 15 years. It took me 10 years to get my final verdict from the time I filed my charge until the end. This is not a win situation for trial lawyers. And most people like myself, we don't want a lawsuit. All we want is the right to have our job, go to work, and get paid according to what we should be paid legally under the law. Let me give you a case. Suppose a woman's been working at a job for, say, five years, and she listens around, she hears the scuttlebutt, and she gets a pretty clear sense that some guy who's doing exactly what she's doing is getting more than her. What can she do about it? What stops her from finding out the question of the number the other guy's getting compared to her number and getting something done about it? What are the obstacles? The obstacles, like in my case, was the company I worked for said if we spoke about our wages, we wouldn't have a job. And so no one ever talked about it, nor did they ever post the pay scale as it increased with the cost of living. And also, 
if you go to your HR department, which is the chain of command to find out and ask questions, it's your immediate superior. Oftentimes, I'm told by many people that in three weeks or two months, they're handed a pink slip. You no longer work here because we're cutting out your job. Not because you ask about your money, but it's simply because we're cutting out the job, which is not really true. And people yeah. are so afraid of asking about their pay. Retaliation, retaliation, retaliation. Thank you so much, Louis That's Ledbetter. Right. You're a, a That's pioneer. Right. It's Thank so you. good. Hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russer. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.